What is going on guys, Noah Wide here again for another video. As you can see, I got the Lexus in the garage. I only have the Lexus in the garage because it's always raining now, so it sucks. Can't even work on the cars. I mean, I can. I just had to pull them into the garage, but sometimes I don't feel like doing that. But it's just been really bad weather here lately. It's been raining a lot. Um, yesterday, it felt like there was a, a damn hurricane coming through here. Some of my neighbors actually had their gutters fall off their house, which was pretty crazy. As I've been mentioning uh, a couple videos ago, I think last video too, that I would that I would be bringing the Lexus to get it dyno tuned. Uh, I'm going to be doing the tuning. I'm just renting the dyno. I am set to bring it there this Saturday. So before I do that, I wanted to make sure I run down everything on the car to make sure everything is okay. So pretty much this is kind of just like a video. Um, showing you guys what to look out for and just prepping the Lexus to make sure that when I do take it to the dyno I won't have any issues or at least I'll have the best chance of not having any issues at all because you know dyno dynos are expensive and if you have someone tune your car the last thing you want them to be doing is to be working on your car changing your spark plugs or fixing fuel leaks or doing any of that it's beneficial to you if you go over your car as good as you can that way when you go to the dyno you're paying for tuning not paying for someone to work on your car i'm going to go over a few things things that you guys should look for just to make sure that your guys' cars are a-okay before you go to the dyno there are a few things that i know that i want to address already um, since i've had this turbo kit on i have well when i first put the kit on i was running the stock spark plugs the stock GE spark plugs at the stock gap and um, I'm surprised that it actually ran okay at five pounds. Well, I was making probably like four pounds of boost and it did all right, surprisingly. Um, but I did since switch those out about, oh, I don't know, maybe like seven months ago or something like that. And I've been running some uh, uh, heat range colder plugs gapped at 28 thousandths and those have been perfect. But They've been in there for about seven months, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out. So obviously step number one is make sure you have fresh plugs into your car. Um, these, I'm gonna pull them out. I haven't even pulled them out yet, so I don't even know what they'll look like. So we'll see what that looks like together. Uh, another thing I did check was my catch can. I checked that, it's back buried underneath the EMU over there. And I know my EMU is still there. It's probably gonna be there for a little while, but anyway, I opened up the catch can and man, that thing was clean. There is hardly any blow by it blow by at all if you want to even call anything in there it was it was basically empty which i'm happy with so uh, i did check that i don't have any coolant leaks you obviously want to look for oil leaks if you do have some i know i do have i'm pretty sure my cam seals are leaking you can see there's a little bit of oil over here which sucks because i did do this time belt and cam seals well maybe like i don't know forty thousand miles ago or so and I don't know, maybe they just weren't OE Toyota parts or something, but that's beside the point. I'm not worried about that at the moment. You just want to make sure you don't have, like, I don't have any feed or return leaks or drain, turbo drain leaks. None of that's leaking at all since I got the new turbo on there, so I know that is good to go. But I know I want to change the plugs. I'm going to change the oil, get some fresh oil in there. And then I think I'm going to go on around and check all my vacuum lines, like... The vacuum line of my blow-off valve I, I was out driving yesterday and i noticed that it had a crack right here so i just cut part of it off with the razor blade and just cinched it up tighter and it, it's fine but i'm just going to replace that hose all together i also am going to replace this uh fuel pressure regulator like the reference hose i'm going to replace that i'm just going to take off everything make sure all my caps are good make sure that everything is in order Man, I can't wait to go to a forward-facing intake manifold. Taking that uh, crossover tube stuff gets kind of old. Fortunately, it doesn't take very long, but did get everything off. 
I just like to, like I said, you just want to make sure you just double check everything, make sure everything is as good as it can be. Fix any, you know, spark plug wires that look frayed or broke or any connectors that might be broke. As you guys know, the coil pack connectors on these are known for just cracking and breaking. Um, I have the stock ones on here still. Fortunately, I was able to be to get lucky. I am going to do my best to not have to unplug them though. I'm just going to unbolt the coils and the wires and just my goal is to just lift up the whole coil with it still connected to the connector. That way I don't have to disconnect them because trying to find those connectors right now will be very hard to do before I have to head to the dyno. They're just not going to make it here in time. So I'm going to do my best to try and just keep those intact. But fuel leaks, I don't have any fuel leaks. I haven't had any. That's all checked out good. I went on ahead and this is my pressure source right here that goes out to my boost gauge and to the EMU. So just want to make sure that that stuff is solid. That stuff's all good. I went on ahead and just put a cut off the zip ties and just put two new ones on there. My air assist injector cap is still doing good. Both the caps, excuse me, both the caps that are on my um, throttle body piece there uh, are both still fine. The PCB cap is good and the original air assist cap is just fine. I went on ahead and pulled off. I'll show you guys. This is my little vacuum line setup. Uh, this right here comes off of the little Y piece on top of the engine. Then it goes to a check valve right here that then this side goes to my fuel pressure regulator. And then this side goes out to my blow off valve. So this is the stuff I'm gonna replace. I already knew I was gonna replace just to make sure it's all new and fresh because it is kind of old. And I kind of just want to clean this up a little bit, but I am going to go to this parts store, get some plugs, get some new vacuum line, get um, an oil, get some oil and an oil filter. Matter of fact, let me see what the oil looks like. Should be pretty clean, I think. Let's see. I don't know if this is going to focus on that, but eh, it's it's pretty clean still. Not bad. Little little low, not that low but slightly low that's fine so yeah let me go ahead and get these spark plugs out of here and see what they look like all right got the plugs pulled out like i said i was able to keep pretty much the connectors all intact to the coil packs kind of just laid everything on the side um don't have any oil leaks valve cover gases are doing all right it is kind of wet down there because every time i take this throttle body off you know, it has a coolant that runs through it. And so I drop some in there every now and again, but that's no big deal. Um, so far though, everything is looking really good, guys. Uh, I got my catch can connectors are doing just fine going over there. Haven't had any issue, any issue with those. Show you guys what the plugs look like here. They're all burning, burning perfectly fine. I don't have any issues with them at all. I don't know if you can really see them or zoom in on them, but um, yeah they look great can't complain so i am running targeting at about 11 and a half afrs um maybe 11.3 to 11.5 for the afrs currently i am doing that just to try and make sure i keep the cylinder temperatures down as best as i can with a little bit extra fuel um, obviously everyone's going to have their opinion on what afr should be but this is what I've run. I've tuned not a lot of cars, but I have tuned a few cars and this is what I'm happy with. So I may actually try and lean it out a little bit more when we're on the dyno to see if that'll net a little bit more power, but that's where I've been running. I am on 91 octane, um, crappy pump fuel. So this is just what it is. But yeah, let me just go and get some new plugs and uh, get those guys installed. Right, guys, made it back from the parts store, went on ahead and picked up some fresh plugs. So you guys know what I'm running. I don't think I've ever told you guys what plugs I'm running. These are the plugs I'm using, NGK Iridiums. There's a part numbers right there. You can just look at them. Uh, I gapped these to 28 thousandths. So boosted cars, obviously they're gonna vary depending on how much boost you're running. You know, you can have spark blowout don't really want to run much higher than maybe 32 thousandths, especially if you're running 15 plus PSI. Um, you probably want to get that down. I mean, I know you can run these as tight as 20 thousandths, 
but that would be for you know pretty high boost applications you know we're talking 20 plus pounds 25 30 pounds of boost uh, I run these at 28 thousandths like I said so they're fresh other plugs look perfectly fine so shouldn't have any issues with these went on ahead and picked up some more vacuum hose over there and then like I said I'm gonna do an oil change so this is the oil that I run Obviously, everyone has a preference on what oil they use, but this is what I've been using in this car. It's what I use in my, uh, it's also what I use in my, in my S13. And this thing has 280,000 miles on it, and this thing runs perfectly fine. So, uh, I think I use the same oil in the Honda also. But anyway, we just slap these plugs back up in here and uh, get this all back together. Fire it up, make sure everything is running good, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Got everything back together. New plugs are in. New vacuum hose ran. Um, only thing I have left to do is to just change the oil. But wanted to show you guys again. I know I've gone over this stuff, but just so you guys know and you're up to date on how my vacuum is ran, uh, I have my pressure source right here. It's kind of looped around, goes into a plastic T right here. Part of the T goes off into my fuel pressure regulator. I have a one-way check valve in there, so this regulator never sees vacuum, it only sees boost. This is just how my vacuum is set up right here. Then from the other T is going off into the top port of the blow-off valve. This is how I've had it. This is how I've always ran it for the past year, and it works perfectly. And then, like I said, my other map sensor source here is going teed off here part of the t goes to the emu black the other part of the t goes down into the cabin and into my boost gauge all right guys got everything done oil change is done i forget how much i hate doing the oil change on this car the oil filter is in the stupidest location it could be um, i know they make oil filter relocation kits i just don't know if it's going to work with a sandwich plate for the turbo feed so i don't know i guess i'll just have to leave it how it is for now unless somebody else has a uh, fix for that uh, i might just do a little bit of research and see what i can come up with but oil change is done spark plugs are changed vacuum hoses are changed and uh, nothing left to do but to just start it up uh, i'm going to go ahead and leave the cover off for now just to make sure i don't have any leaks or anything that i can see but like i said overall everything was doing good nothing was broken while i was down there i went on ahead and checked the uh vacuum hoses for the wastegate make sure that the boost controller is hooked up correct uh, well i mean it is hooked up correct just to make sure nothing was melted or burnt you know any of the vacuum lines i have them uh, tucked up as far as i can to the left so it's not close to the turbo but so far everything looks good so i'm going ahead and just start it up i wanted to show you guys something else so you can see in here that my wide band my am wide band this one is reading completely lean. Um, I don't think AEM, I don't know. I don't know if the quality is as good as it used to be, but uh, it started just going kind of real finicky. It would go rich lean, rich lean a lot, really bad. And then one day I started it and it just went completely lean and just stayed there. So I looked up online and everyone says that when the sensors fail, they go lean. So. I called up Summit Racing. Fortunately, they're nice enough to send me a replacement sensor. I put the replacement sensor in there, and I kid you not, as soon as I started the car, it read fine for about 15 seconds, and then it went straight lean again. So, needless to say, I don't, I don't know. I doubt the two sensors could be broke, but I'm just going to go on ahead and pull this AEM wideband out. I'm going to exchange it. I'm going to try an innovative wideband from Summit. It's like an extra 20 bucks, and um, I'll just try that one out to see how it goes. Uh, fortunately, the EMU has its own sensor, and that is reading perfectly fine. So the car is okay. So if you guys do see that that is reading lean, I'm going to have to leave it in for the dyno session because I won't be able to get a new sensor in time. So I'm going to leave it in, and then after the dyno session, I'm going to go on ahead and replace it. But um, aside from that, the car, like I said, been, it's been running really good. So can't complain. The EMU black was definitely the move. So I'm going to go out and drive the car now and uh, kind of see how it feels.
that's gonna do it for this video guys I hope this helped you guys out letting you know what you need to check before you go on ahead and take your car to any tuner or a dyno it's just it's, it's within your best interest to just make sure your car is a-okay so you're not wasting their time and you're not wasting your own time and more importantly wasting your own money so yeah um, the next video on this car I'll definitely be uploading will be on uh, it might be on this this weekend the uh, dyno appointment is on Saturday so if I can get the video edited, I will definitely upload on Saturday. If not, it will definitely come out on Sunday, so be on the lookout for that. I appreciate you guys stopping by as usual. I appreciate all the love, and uh, as usual, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.